first thing on the ZR5 that I always uh, recognize is the, is the suspension in the front of it. Um, by putting the cab right over the suspension, um, it really helps with operator fatigue. Um, by having that, that cab over the suspension, the, the operator feels the full uh, stroke of the suspension uh, versus, versus having a cab back behind, maybe over a solid axle where you don't quite get the full benefits of the suspension. So um, really the operator fatigue is greatly reduced by doing that. Uh, the second thing I always uh, notice on the front of the ZR5 is, is the cab and the, and the view you get to the, the windrow. So by having that view to the windrow, um, and also by having cameras in the cab looking at the pickup behind as well as the, the tailgate behind, um, no more turning around for that operator. So again, reducing operator fatigue um, and allowing that operator to, to bail, bail longer into the night um, that he couldn't do before. The other thing, nice part about having the, the cameras in there, um, before when you're looking back at a bailer, you're really only uh, seeing the windrow just touch the tines of the pickup. Uh, by having this positioned a little bit differently, the camera positioned a little bit differently, um, you can actually see up into the throat of the baler as well. And then also uh, being able to see how the bale is, is coming out of the back of the, uh, of the uh, baler uh, by having a second camera position there as well. So, what, what we notice a lot when we're watching people bale hay is, is there's a lot of turning around and looking at the pickup and seeing where the drive line is and seeing where the baler is. By having it in one unit and putting the cameras in there, now the operator's no longer turning around, no longer bending his neck. The, the, the screens for those cameras, both for the pickup as well as for the tailgate are right in front of you. So you can see what's happening and you're no longer straining your body to turn around and look at that. And if you think about it, a guy who's bailing several hundred, several hundred bales per day, um, that's several hundred movements that you're really eliminating from that, uh, from that, that customer um, by allowing him to just look straight ahead, uh, watch the monitors in front of him and see the windrow and see how he enters the windrow. The next thing we want to talk about, maybe from the side of the baler here, is the, the hydraulic drive. So by driving the baler uh, with hydraulics versus a right angle um, uh, gearbox, um, you really eliminate a lot, of, a lot of parts, including the drive line. Uh, we eliminated a lot of uh, chains, chains there as well. Um, so actually we should have reduced maintenance on the baler itself. The other nice part about having a hydraulic drive is, is we can actually change speeds of the baler. So we can speed up the pickup, we can stop the pickup when we stop the baler. Um, so we can kind of maintain the, the pickup a little bit longer. But also um, we can speed up the baler during a tie cycle so we actually increase the speed of the tie cycle as well. Uh, we also are um, still, still looking at um, getting into different crop conditions and, and, and changing the speed of the baler for different crop conditions as well. So by, by using a hydraulic drive for the baler, uh, we greatly increase the efficiency of the baler and speed up the whole baling process. Um, the baler load and unload feature is another uh, great, great piece. We can actually unload the baler uh, from the machine and drive away within, a, within about a minute um, and load the, back, load the baler back up. So again, it increases um, the ease to do the maintenance of the baler, but also we believe the machine will outlive the baler uh, thus allowing the machine to have a new baler loaded back in when the baler does become wore out at the end of, uh, end of the baler. Um, one thing I forgot to talk about, I guess, um, is the steering on this. We've actually got two modes of steering. We have a field mode where the, uh, the casters in the front are just free to spin around and allows you to zero turn uh, the baler into the next wind row um, without having to take a big wide uh, wide turn to for the for the drive line like you'd have to do on a on a standard baler, but also what we find with a lot of other self-propelled machines is going down the road at high speeds, you get a little squirrely in in certain conditions. So what we do is when we go into transport mode, we can transport the the machine at 30 plus miles per hour. We actually lock those in, and you actually end up steering with those wheels in transport mode uh, versus a zero turn machine with the casters. So you're able to go from field mode to transport mode and feel confident in how the machine is going to act in both of those uh, conditions. The other thing you see when you're bailing is integrated quarter turn. So what we found um, with our inline ramp on our 605 balers is that when we quarter turn the bales in rows, especially in corn stalks, you increase the efficiency of the person picking up the bales um, after the baler by up to 35%. Um, so by quarter turning the bales with the machine, you're able to, to really save the, the next person's job by quite a bit, making it so much easier for them to pick up bales. We've also got a hillside turn option as well. So if you think about a lot of people, especially the, the land around here, um, a lot of guys end up backing their baler up and trying to get the bale positioned um, so that it doesn't roll down the hill. 
Um, we actually got it, got this integrated into the machine. If you think about it, it's almost like we've put a level on the machine. You could, the machine will turn until that level is level and then it will dump the bale. So no more bales rolling down hills and uh, being able to place those bales exactly where you need them on the hillside so they don't ro roll down is, is so much easier as well. Um, the other thing that we have in this baler, integrated into the baler, is, is an automation piece. If you think about a, a normal baling cycle, um, when you get to, to tie, your baler starts tying, you hit the clutch, you take it out of gear, um, you open the tailgate, you close the tailgate, you push the clutch back in, you put it back into gear, and then you let the clutch out. So there's a lot of steps in the normal baling process. With this, when, it, when the baler gets to the tying cycle, it automatically turns the pickup off, it automatically stops the machine, it automatically quarter turns, it automatically opens the tailgate, automatically closes the tailgate, puts it back into the windrow, and the only thing the operator has to do then is push a go button to start into that windrow um, again. And then the last piece that I think is really important is just the speed that this baler can go through the field. With the suspension um, and everything else, you're no longer limited to uh, how fast you can go and stay in your seat. You're really limited to, to the baler now. Um, so that's really the infield piece that, that increases speed. The other thing is going from field to field. Being able to go 30 plus miles per hour with this machine is very important, especially for those guys that have got smaller fields and spend a lot of time on the roads. So.